Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I had a lot of compliments on this tree that I posted on Facebook, so I thought I would create one with you all. I'm using a Santorini stone. Thank you, Sandy. Your gift should be arriving soon. Uh, please let me know when you are, when you get it. Uh, I hope you love it. And thank you again for sending me beautiful Santorini stones to paint on. Uh, now, to start off, we're going to be doing like a colorful sky background. Um, I'm going to be watering down some acrylic paint to kind of make it look like watercolor. Uh, some people think it looks like alcohol ink when we're done. Uh, I guess depending on how you apply it, you could make it look similar to alcohol ink. Um, but I am just using watered down acrylic paint by Folk Art. Uh, the paint colors that I used in this tutorial will be listed in the description for you all, just in case you want to use the similar colors. Um, Basically, you just choose the colors that you want for your sky and just put a little bit of paint in a paint tray and add water. Make it really watery so that it's very transparent. Um, and then I'm going to be using sponges to apply the colors on. And you guys have seen me do that kind of stuff before. I'm just going to be making it as colorful as possible. So you can see the colors I'm using. There is magenta, orange, lime green, perfect purple, cerulean blue, and um, it's all watered down, ready to go. Now I am using Martha Stewart sponges. You do not have to use the same kind of sponges as me. Basically, it's just a plastic stick with a sponge on top of it. Um, and I use one for each color. Do not mix your sponges. If you see a pencil line there, I'm just standing it up because we're gonna be uh, painting a Christmas tree on it. And I wanna make sure that if I were to stand this stone up, my Christmas tree isn't slanted funny because of the shape of my stone. Um, so I drew a line there. We're not going to see that. Don't worry. It's going to be hidden later behind the Christmas tree. But um, I wanted to just put it there so I know where, what direction my tree needs to go in if I were to stand my rock up straight. <laughs> it's just something I do. Uh, so you can see, you can see right through this paint as I'm putting it on. I might add a little bit darker to the purple. Um, but basically you can see right through it and you can still see um, the way it kind of surrounds all the crystals in the Santorini stone. Um, it leaves like a strange textured look when I water my paint down. So it's kind of cool. It's the look I'm going for. You can kind of still see through it. Um, and believe it or not, you can still see the crystals shimmering, um, only they're a different color now. Uh, so if you put a very small amount of paint mixed with water, um, it's actually kind of cool technique. So give it a try. If you don't like it, just blend some colors on like you've seen me do in other tutorials. Um, I've done lots of blending of backgrounds uh, to give you guys lots of ideas and, and just use whatever colors you want. And then when we are done, I'm going to cover it in some hologram 2796. So that's pretty easy and it, it makes people smile. <laughs> So I'm just using a little bit of light, light, light green. It's very, very bright. It might be even lime green uh, and making sure to get some of that in there as well, because in the end, it just kind of looks like a sunset or northern lights, aurora borealis. Um, so you did see that probably in my northern lights tutorial or uh, Northern Nights tutorial. I don't even know what I called it now. Uh, but check out my video list for some blending uh, techniques. If you see a blended background, check out that tutorial to show you how I do it. Um, but there's really only one thing to remember with sponges. Don't use the same sponge for many different colors. Uh, use a different sponge for each color. Give them their own designated sponge for each color um, so that you don't turn everything into a muddy mess. Uh, but you can see the texture in some of them. You can see the little crystals and it looks really, really cool when we are done. Uh, you don't have to use a Santorini stone. You can just use a any old stone, paint it white. Make sure you have a nice uh, thick base coat of white to start off with so that these colors stand out really, really bright. And make sure your white background is dry before you get started or you're just going to mess with your beautiful colors um, and you don't want to do that. So um, make sure that you, if you have to do a base coat of white first, do so and let it dry really, really good. 
it's okay if you get darker to the wards the bottom um uh, that's what I did with mine. It looks beautiful now that it's dry and I can still kind of see the shimmery crystals from, uh, my stone from the original beautiful glistening stone. It reminds me of little chunks of snow, icy snow. It looks beautiful. Um, so now I'm adding some hologram 2796 now that all of my colorful background is completely dry. And I'm using a big fan brush to apply it, but I'm going to use a sponge to get rid of uh, the brush strokes because sometimes with glitter um, you can still see the brush strokes and I don't really like that. So I got a nice thick layer of glitter on there and I'm going in with a nice dry sponge and uh, getting rid of all of those brush strokes and it will dry nice and even. You can't really see how beautiful that hologram 2796 is uh, right now and you won't be able to see how beautiful it is until I resin it and show you at the end but I assure you it is magical for your eyeballs. So now we are going to paint our tree. Uh, <laughs> I sounded really Canadian there. Um, and we are, um, everything's dry. The hologram is dry. It still looks really wet but that's because hologram kind of gives it like a a gleam, a little sheen. Um, so basically uh, the tree is triangular. It's like a triangle with a bunch of bumps hanging off the sides. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just, I'm sketching it on. You can draw it on with pencil first if you're more comfortable with that. Um, but I've done a lot of these. So yeah, I find it fairly easy to uh, just do a bumpy triangle. Make some of your bumps longer than the others. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to fill it in with hunter green. So this is my darkest green I, I have on my shelf. So uh, I'm just using a dark green. So use whatever you have and uh, sketch out with a thicker paintbrush what your sh tree shape is going to be. And then go in with sponges to fill it in because it gives it like a nice even coat of the green. And I'm going to do two coats of green because I can see kind of through it still after the first coat, but a second coat will do just fine. So it's looking like a tree. It does look like a tree with a colorful sky in the background. <laughs> and honestly, the hologram glitter kind of reminds me of snow, like off in the distance, sprinkling down and just glittering as it comes down, just a beautiful snowy evening. Um, so yeah, I needed a second coat for sure to get over top of some of that lighter green in the background, but we're going to be covering this up even more as we go along. There's going to be some layers, some texture, um, and, uh, we won't see any of that background behind it after all. So now that my hunter green is dry, we are going to add some snow and there's a reason why I do the snow now. Um, because of the texture that we are going to be applying afterwards, I want the snow to be on here before. So I'm taking a thicker paintbrush, not, not a fine lining brush, but just a little bit bigger, just so I can put like a nice thick amount of white paint. And what we're doing is we're adding some snow. That's it. Be random with it. Little areas with, with some snow on the branches. Um, and don't worry about being too like perfect with it, um, or exact. It doesn't really matter. Look, that looks like a little duck, um, little white duck there. <laughs> um, now I'm not going to be able to see anything else, but that duck, it's a strange looking duck, but it's still a duck. So I'm just adding, I'm getting a little bit thicker as I get down a little bit deeper of snow, I suppose. And there's going to be some snow on the bottom as well. Um, this might not look right to you right now. It might not look like that great. You might think, oh no, she's ruined it. Um, I promise it will all turn out. The snow is, is part of the magical, uh, decor of this Christmas tree. So we're going to make the snow work no matter how funny it looks right now. <laughs> now you have to make sure you let your white paint dry before we move on to the next step. If you have been following my tutorials, uh, I've been using like a UV lamp to cure gel polish and use some chrome powders or gel polishes uh, or foils, nail stuff. It's all nail stuff. I've been doing that on my stones lately. So for this, you will definitely need... Um, the top coat clear gel polish, a UV lamp, 
um, and some chrome powder. But if you do not have that, you can still paint this beautiful tree. Um, I'm just showing you how I do it. So if you've seen me use chrome powders and stuff in the past, I've used many different colors of them. This time I'm using, it looks actually like chrome, like it's like silver metal. It, it's beautiful. And I'm going to put a little bit of top coat gel polish, which is Kiera Sky. Um, you can get this from the pinkchair.ca. Uh, their link is in the description of my video. And it's just a clear top coat, which normally people put over top of their polish to final, finalize their manicure, um, and then you have to cure it under a UV lamp. So it's just a clear gel polish, and I'm putting it just on the bottom portion of the snow pieces. So you can see just a fine line of, or is not really fine, I'm not being very careful with it, but I'm just lining the bottom portion of all of the little pieces of snow that I added to my tree. And then once I have all of these gel polish uh, areas done, I'm going to cure it under my UV lamp for 35 seconds and I'm going to put some chrome powder on it. Uh, you might have a different lamp. You might have different polish. It might take longer to cure. It might take less time to cure. Um, but keep an eye on what your products uh, ask for in order to cure and stuff like that. Um, you might not be able to do it the same way that I'm doing it because I have a different lamp. Uh, the lamp and everything that I use is all going to be in the description of the video, including the chrome powder that I'm putting here. This kind of chrome powder, I believe I bought it on Amazon, so I will list the link in the description as well. Um, but the top coat gel polish that I just used, I did get from the pink chair. And I'm just using a little makeup sponge. Uh, usually when you buy chrome powders, it comes with some little uh, eye makeup sponges. And that's how you apply it. But they're the little applicators. And uh, yeah, I'm just dabbing it on, smudging it on to the areas that I did the gel polish. And then afterwards, I'm just going to use a little fan brush and uh, brush off all the excess glitter that we didn't need there. Um, but yeah, you can buy this stuff at the pink chair and use my discount code, Rachel Mitchell, all one word and get a 10% discount, uh, or go to Amazon and purchase it as well. Uh, there's lots of different UV top coats, um, on Amazon. So there's my little fan brush, just getting rid of all the extra glitter so that we can move on to the next step. Um, and I did this snow first because we're going to be overlapping the snow with our hunter green. So what I'm going to be doing is using my fine lining brush. I'm going to make this tree kind of hairy. So I'm just doing little wisps of hunter green, same color I used for the, the base coat and the second coat of the tree to begin with. And I'm just bringing little wisps of hair out and overlapping little wisps of hair over top of the top part of the snow. You'll see me do that as well. And it just kind of makes the tree look a little more realistic, a little more magical, uh, more textured. We're going to be doing this again with a lighter shade of green after we're done with the hunter green. But you will see, I kind of go everywhere. Even if you can't really see it very well, you'll be able to see the texture of it um, over top of the, all of that hunter green. And then, of course, I'm bringing some of these little hairs with these little wispy things. They're going just over top of the snow, like what I'm doing right now. And it, it just kind of looks a little more, a little more like it would in real life. <laughs> Not necessarily realistic, <laughs> just a little less like a child did it. <laughs> so I'm going to do that to the whole tree. And then once I'm done that, I'm going to go in with some Martha Stewart uh, swing set green, which is a brighter green. And that just gives it a little more texture again. Uh, and then we're going to do it with some chrome, uh, just like we did on the snow. We're going to do some gel polish, um, little wisps on the tree and I'm going to use a different color of chrome powder. It's more of a greenish gold um, and I'm going to texture the tree with some 
some greenish gold chrome as well. So this is a long process. It does take a little bit of time. It's definitely wor worth it, like just adding all these little steps. It changes everything. So it's optional. You don't have to do it if you're not comfortable or if you just can't get the flick of the wrist, right? <laughs> when it comes to making your tree furry. Um, if you just can't do it, don't. Do it how you feel comfortable and, and leave it at that. You don't have to... You don't have to do something that you just think doesn't look right. Look at that glitter in the background. It looks gorgeous. Um, so here I'm going in with a little bit of swing set green and it blobs up in some areas. And if that happens, just take your hunter green and thin it out a bit, which is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to fix those blobby parts. Um, depending on the consistency of your paint, you'll get some blobs. So I just went in with some hunter and, and uh, cleared that up a little bit better. And that's all you have to do. Just keep making it fuzzy. Texturize. And it looks uh, really cool in the end. Now, now you're just going to watch my rock jiggle for a few minutes because obviously I, I'm not perfect. <laughs> I sometimes forget that you guys can't see what I'm doing. Um, but I apologize because I always do. And I don't mean to hide anything from you. It's all, it's all here for your eyes to see. Uh, if I would just stay in the darn frame. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You will see it all in the end. Don't worry. You'll see all the texture that I'm talking about. Um, it really does make a difference to have those two different shades of green, as you can see. You'll see all of this way better. It gets magnified under the resin, so you'll be able to see it much, much better. Now, this is what I was talking about. I'm going to be using like the goldish green chrome now, but first we have to do little clear gel top coat hairs all over the tree. You won't be able to see that very well because it's clear and it's invisible, but um, you'll be able to see like little wet hairs on the tree shortly if I turn it a certain way and that's just the same thing it's the same actions we did with the hunter green and the swing set green we're just doing it with the clear t uh, top coat now and then I'm going to put it under the UV light for 35 seconds and and then put some greenish gold chrome and it's nice because that greenish gold chrome doesn't stick to the other chrome because that's already taken care of um, it will only stick to the fresh gel polish that I just cured under the lamp. So everything sticks to where it's supposed to. And you can't see it again, but I will show you. It just it just covers it in uh, chrome everywhere that we put that gel polish. And it gives it like three layers of texture to our beautiful tree. So definitely let me know what you think of that. And if you uh, plan on trying that texturing idea with your tree, you can kind of see its gorgeousness now. Um, it just, instead of using gold paint, use some chrome. Why not? Um, it, I, I have no rules. You use whatever you want on your rocks. It does not matter to me. Anything to make it beautiful makes me happy as far as I'm concerned. Um, now I'm just adding some snow to the bottom. Um, whoa, that's a little much, Rachel slow down. That's why I have a towel on my lap because I always have to wipe off excess paint. Actually, my husband saw paint all over my chest the other day, a little dabs of color everywhere, and he laughed at me. <laughs> he knows his wife is an artist and he understands, but if anything ever happened to me and they were to undress me at, say, a hospital or something, they would see colorful dots like... My chest, my stomach, my legs, <laughs> my arms. I just dab off extra paint on everything and it soaks right through my clothes onto my skin. Good thing I use non-toxic paint. But yeah, I'm covered in like little chicken pox. Every time I do like blended backgrounds like this, I'm covered in like colorful chicken pox. <laughs> uh, only, only my family understands, my immediate family. So... Now that I'm done with that, I brushed off all the excess glitter using my fan brush again. And now I'm doing a gel polish star. So I started with like a blob or a dot of gel polish. And then I'm just kind of stringing out um, some lines from there to make like a big twinkly star. 
put it under the gel light, and now I'm going to use some holographic uh, chrome powder. So you can get lots of different kinds, lots of different colors, and they all have a different effect to them. So, uh, And also, depending on the background that you use, they look different on different colors of background. So it's just a fancy, shiny star. <laughs> looks pretty nice so I am going to resin it and then I'm going to add crystals after I resin it um, so you're going to see me do some chrome on the top of the snow while I explain the crystals so I'm going to take this and resin it and I'm going to wait about eight hours before I add some crystals and those crystals are going to be my decorations on the tree you don't have to use crystals you can just paint your own little dotted decorations or or whatever. You do what you want. You don't even have to put decorations on it if you like it just like this. So I do uh, go overboard with the glitter and the crystals and stuff like that. So of course I'm going to add some <laughs> to my Christmas tree. So once I'm done with the snow here, which I'm obviously working on right now, I am going to resin it let it cure for eight or so hours, and then add crystals. So I'm gonna try not to show you the rock while I'm adding the crystals, because I don't wanna ruin it for the final reveal. But um, yeah, it is going to look magical, and you will see it. And then I'm gonna let it cure for the rest of the time with the crystals on it, and uh, show you once it's dry. So here is the crystals. I use a little wax pencil from Amazon and I add my flat back crystals. I'm gonna add like all different colors. Uh, I have my rock drying on a scat mat, which does reduce the amount of junk that I have to sand off the back of my rocks if I have to. Um, I did a nice thick layer on this rock, so there's going to be some uh, maintenance on the back of this rock afterwards either way, but I've added my crystals, trying not to show it to you. There it is. It is absolutely magical, you guys. I added lots of crystals. You do whatever you want for your decorations. Have fun with it. Look at the crystal. Like My phone, my camera does not even know what to focus on because it's just so sparkly and magical. It's going to look beautiful. I'm going to put it in my Etsy shop for someone special. And I just want to tell you guys, I love you. Um, I hope you up, upcoming people have a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, I will be back very soon. Take care of yourselves, guys. Bye.